Hello and welcome to the Prismatoscape plugin overview video. You as the viewer of this video may be considering purchasing the plugin and I'm here to tell you why you should or shouldn't. So what is the Prismatoscape plugin? Well, it is a locally bound global interaction system using the Niagara Grids 2D and the output is a render target that can be read in any material or any particle even. We can actually just look in our render targets and you can see we have this wind render target which just gets read in a material as a texture uh, like any other texture and we can tell a material to do a bunch of stuff. For example, we can tell some foliage to jiggle around in the wind. So wherever there is wind, jiggle. Pretty basic. Um, we can tell grass to bend over in the wind. See, I've got a little little explosion happening here. Um, so we do this. The grass blows in the wind. And there are multiple render targets that have multiple different purposes. So for example, this one denotes the long-term deformation of the ground and or foliage. This one here is the water surfaces. So if I punch this water with my little clicker, um, you can see that we see the water as just, a, you know, or the water ripples as a texture. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that this is a local simulation that follows our point of interest, aka the, the player in most cases. Um, could be the camera in other cases. So as we leave, uh, everything gets lost, which is usually fine. So if you're looking for something that can do persistent trails along your entire world, this isn't going to do that. But what it does do, it does extremely fast and performantly. So let's just fire through a few of the applications of this plugin that I've come up with uh, in this demo test level. Uh, so for example, we can use the wind over time, which is the B and A channels of the, the wind render target, to displace the UVs of a texture. Um, that's how we get this kind of mist effect. So if we start running through the mist, you can see that it is affected by, you know, the direction that we're kind of pushing it around. Secondly, we have puddles. Now this puddle, is just a material effect. It doesn't have a mesh or anything, uh, purely material, yet we are able to interact with it. And you can also see that, if I press the puddles button, uh, our puddles have accurate boundaries at all times. So you can see that these ripples aren't just kind of crossing over here. Um, they're actually kind of moving around the surface of the puddle as water usually would. See, we're now getting these ripples that are, you know, traveling up here into this body over here. And when we're not on a puddle, uh, we're not going to be creating ripples at all. Uh, this is all done on the GPU, so there's no traces, there's no reading from a texture in the CPU. Um, it's just all done behind the scenes. All right, over here we have an example of particles reading from our render targets. So these leaves are reading from the input render target. So wherever we are moving, we are saying, hey, you know, change the velocity of the particle. Uh, these also react to the wind render target and they are bound by height. So the wind is only going to affect them when they're close to the ground. Um, so if the leaves go like way up in the air, they're not going to be affected by the wind effects. Now, in addition to that, we can use some world position offset on our particles um, so that if they are on a water surface they can actually bob up and down with the ripples. Uh, this is just doing a, a height check using a runtime virtual texture that just checks is the the particles material near the water surface. If it is then we apply the same world position offset that we applied to the uh, to the water to the particles. So that's just a little a little bonus. All right, here we can see that we have a field of reads uh, and these reads are reacting to what I call the interaction bubble, which is a more large slash medium sized interaction. Um, usually you'll just have one of these bubbles per character. 
uh, and essentially it just makes things move out of the way. But it also writes the velocity of the bubble to the render target, and the material uses that velocity to determine if it should be wiggling. So if we're standing still, these have moved, but they're not jiggling. But then if I like jump up in the air, they're all going to wiggle, you know, because my velocity is more than zero. All right, next up, we have some general foliage interaction. So these bushes here, you can see that we're actually pushing individual verts uh, using our interaction bubble, uh, as well as bending the, you know, the, the pivot of the bush using that same bubble. But these are also affected by the wind. So the wind can push the individual verts around, but if the wind hits the pivot, um, it will bend the bush over and apply like, you know, a jiggle, uh, like, a, like a, an overall wiggle, like this. We can see these smaller looking sapling things. They are slightly affected by the interaction bubble, but these ones are actually reading from the smaller deform mask. So what our grass is also reacting to. So we can actually step on this and have it sort of permanently squish over. We also have this little fella here, which is using the foliage squisher, which will squish down when we are on top of it, uh, as well as if we run over it, it will squish individual verts downwards. This one's useful for like ferns and stuff. Um, you know, foliage that you would be standing on top of rather than uh, pushing aside. So that's nice to have. And we can also mask the height. So if you've got trees, we can blow the leaves of the trees, but we can restrict the, you know, the jiggling of the leaves and stuff to the lower section of the tree. So if you've got a really, really tall tree, you wouldn't want these wind effects to be affecting it all the way up the top uh, because this is simulating wind close to the ground rather than, you know, it's not a three-dimensional system. It's a 2D projection. Right, over here, we can see that we can assign things to block wind. Uh, so obviously you wouldn't want wind traveling, you know, inside houses and stuff. So we can just set these to draw to, you know, a runtime virtual texture, which is saying block the wind. And so if I just shoot wind at this, uh, you can see that it is not letting wind affect things behind it. Very handy, very nice to know. And this also brings us to the grass. So the grass is reacting to the individual bodies of the character. So if this character ragdolls and falls over, um, the collision will be accurate to that character. Now, another cool addition is that if the grass has been trampled in one direction, you can't untrample it by just running over it in the other direction. So it's not gonna like kind of stick to the feet and just stick back up as we run over it. Uh, we can eventually get it to stick back up by reversing it and whatnot, uh, but it's only when the, the grass or, you know, this deformation mask is weak enough that we can actually move the grass in the complete opposite direction. We can always move it to the side. We can like kind of redirect it, but we can't just make it kind of stick to our feet and come back up like this. Or at least it's harder when it's fully trampled. Now, another thing that we could be using this for is for ground cover. Um, you can see that as I move my feet, push, you know, these dead twigs and leaves around. Um, you know, it's just a nice little bit of extra interaction that you can put in your scene, uh, as well as react to the wind. Um, so if the wind is high enough, we make them jiggle and kind of rise up in the air. The leaf effect is a bit janky. It was kind of just a test, but you know, you, there's a lot of things that you can accomplish with just a few render targets. Right, moving on, we have some water. So the water uh, supports reflections, like ripple reflections. So the, the ripples will actually ripple off the boundaries of the water. The boundary of the water is determined by a runtime virtual texture, our favorite. But there's also a few other things like the wind. The wind will just create noise. Um, so you can imagine, you know, if a character shot an arrow over a body of water, 
then we would get these nice, smaller, noisier ripples. As well as, you know, if, a, if there's like an explosion or something, then we would see, you know, some ripples on the water. Uh, and that's all just passively done. That's just one render target, you know, being read from another render target. We also draw to a, a surface render target, uh, which is like a coarse sort of footprint, um, footprint slash deform render target. So useful for things like snow and sand, mud, and all that kind of stuff. One thing to note is that if it is raining and you've got puddles and whatnot, um, you can actually use this to create more puddles. So if I, you know, draw here, you can see that we've created a puddle. And this also affects the boundaries, you know, when we're rippling our water and stuff. So you can get some really immersive effects from utilizing this render target. You can increase the resolution of all of these simulations, but keep in mind that the higher the resolution, the more it's gonna cost at a, a flat cost. You can also scale the input resolution separate to the simulation resolution. So if your scene only has a few characters in it, you could use a higher resolution in both of them. But if you're planning on having, you know, lots and lots of characters and lots and lots of interacting objects, then you'll probably want to have as low input resolution as possible. And then the the simulation resolutions are just a, like a flat cost behind the scenes. And lastly, but not leastly, the water can also affect the foliage. So the foliage can just read from our water ripple render target. Uh, we can just say, you know, when they are disturbed, they jiggle. It's as easy as that. So that's just another extra little thing that we can accomplish by, you know, utilizing a few render targets. So what doesn't this plugin do? Well, it isn't replicated. So there's no way to guarantee that both players are seeing the exact same, you know, wind simulation. Uh, however, you can replicate the inputs to, you know, the system. You can replicate when wind gets drawn. The other thing is it doesn't need to be replicated. It's purely a visual effect. You know, you wouldn't want all of your falling leaf particles to be replicated. Uh, that's just asking too much and it's not relevant. The other thing it doesn't do is worldwide persistent trails. So if you're expecting, you know, I can run from this town to another town and then see my footsteps all the way back to this other town, that's not what this plugin does. It's purely a local simulation. It also doesn't do individual simulations like Fluid Ninja. Um, so if you're expecting, you know, like Fluid Ninja we have at home, that isn't what this is. This is a purely 2D projected general interaction system. But keep in mind, even though it is a local simulation, it is always following the, the focal point. So it's always going to follow you around and you're always going to see within your line of sight, uh, you're always going to see, you know, the interactions happening. The other thing it doesn't do is physics. So your the wind simulation isn't going to be readable by physics objects. At least I haven't implemented it myself. You could read from the render targets on the CPU, but I wouldn't recommend doing it. What I would recommend is doing it coincidentally. So you spawn, you know, a cylinder collision that is your wind, you know, your wind object, and you apply a force while also drawing to the wind input. Uh, so that way they coincide with one another and it's good enough. This doesn't do buoyancy. Uh, it's not a buoyancy system. I don't know why you'd think it is. The ripples are just, you know, capillary ripples. They're not actually supposed to be like waves and stuff. So I don't really think that's super relevant. Uh, this system doesn't deal with sound. So, you know, if you've got wind blowing your foliage around, it's not gonna play any sounds. It's purely just the, the visuals and the, the wind simulation. Uh, again, you could get around this by doing that same method that I described with, you know, having your own collision capsules and, you know, if the capsule overlaps with foliage, you play the jiggle, the jiggle sound. This plugin also doesn't manage your weather for you. So it's not going to manage your, you know, is it raining? Are there puddles on the ground? Uh, anything like that. Um, it does have 
things that you can change with your weather system. For example, the puddle mask and all that. Um, that will need to be integrated with your systems. And the last limitation is that it doesn't support simultaneous multi-story platforms. Uh, so if you are in your project able to see the bottom floor and the top floor, and you've got foliage that you want to interact on both levels at the same time, then you're out of luck because that would require a 3D simulation and or multiple simulation, you know, grids. Um, it can do one and then the other separately. You can toggle between them by riding the platform to the height RVT, but it can't do both of them simultaneously. So if you did enjoy what you saw in this little demonstration and none of those limitations are deal breakers for you, then consider buying the Prismatoscape Interaction Plugin. Thanks for watching. How's that?